My wife and I... <laughs> I'll have to get used to saying that. <laughs> My wife and I would like to thank everybody for coming here today. Uh, especially Mr and Mrs Chambers for laying on this wonderful do. And to Thelma's Uncle Norman, a special thanks for his few kind words. I don't know how to follow a funny speech like that, so I won't try. Rats. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Uh, thank you for the lovely presents. It's a good job Thelma and I like toast, as we now have a toast rack for every day of the week. <laughs> that should get a laugh at the wedding. <laughs> no, 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 but seriously, we have had some lovely presents. Haven't we, darling? <laughs> Thelma's Uncle Norman has known Thelma since she was so high. I myself have known her since she was not much higher. In fact, since Park Junior School Form 4B on that fateful summer's day when her desk was moved next to mine. So you can see um, that the, the affair has hardly been a whirlwind romance. No, no. Rather, it has been a... a... Long, drawn-out, boring affair of no interest to anybody but the pair of you. <laughs> an affair which has, an affair which has, as the song says, grown better every day and stronger in every way. God preserve us. <laughs> hey, listen. L listen. It's a good job, Thelma and I like toast, as we now have a toast rack for every day of the week. <laughs> I think that'll get a laugh at the wedding. It'll hardly have them rolling under the tables, will it? You shouldn't try to be funny, Bob. You know how terrible you are at telling jokes. Uh, you can say what you like, Terry, tonight. Nothing is going to get up my nose. I feel calm and serene, above it all, on a different plane. Just mind over matter. I have achieved tranquility through concentration and discipline. Plus four sleeping pills and six tranquilizers. <laughs> you haven't. You'll sleep through the whole honeymoon. And three travel sickness pills and an iron jelloid. <laughs> Why an iron jelloid? Well, that one was a mistake. I hope it doesn't clash. Your system will never stand the shock. You'll become a drug addict overnight. Poor Thelma, thinking she's marrying a nice young man with prospects. What a shock's in store for her tomorrow night. There she'll be, lying there in a new light nylon nightie, and there'll be you, writhing on the floor, having the cold turkey. Salivering at the mouth and pulling out your hair and screaming, Where's my iron jelloid? Where's my iron jelloid? <laughs> you know, those pills haven't made me tired at all, but I do feel tranquil. I feel incredibly tranquil. And I feel calm and relaxed. I can't find the ring. <laughs> what a fool, you idiot! I knew it. 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 Man, calm down. Just testing, just testing your discipline and control. Well, you shouldn't joke about things like that. You could have done serious damage to my metabolism. <laughs> Look, there's only one sure way of unwinding that's to get a few bevies under your belt. Come on, get your coat on. All the lads are down the black horse. All what lads? All of them. Sid, Steve, John, Tony, Blakey, Big Dave, everybody. Well, they can stay there, can't they? I mean, I'm not going out tonight. I told you I wasn't going out tonight. That was the point of asking you round here, wasn't it? Just the two of us. I know, I know. It's my little surprise, isn't it? I arranged it behind your back. It's a little surprise, like. Oh, wait. Well, thank you very much, but I'm in for the night. I've got my packing to do. God's sake, man, it's your stag night. I know, I told you I wasn't having a stag, didn't I? Not in the old-fashioned traditional sense. And what is the old-fashioned traditional sense? Yeah, now, all that last-minute desperate drunkenness. And what is wrong with all that last-minute desperate drunkenness? That is what a stag party is about. That is a proper stag party. God in heaven, what are things coming to? Now it's an evening for two instead of a great roaring booze up and punch up. I'm not going near a pub. <sighs> You're just going to sit here, are you? In the lotus position, I suppose. A drugged-up zombie with his telly and kogo. People don't do that nowadays, anyhow. They, they don't have night before rave-ups, and I'm not either. Well, you should. You should feel ashamed breaking tradition like this. Stag parties should be drunken dudes, and they should be the night before. I mean, that's what gives some bite to the wedding, some drama. Because nobody knows if the groom's going to make it or not. I'm going to make it. I have every intention of making it. That's why I'm staying in and I'm staying sober. <sighs> You're just going to sit there, ticking away the hours to blast off. It'll be agony. Blast off? 
I'm not going into lunar orbit. <laughs> I'm getting married in the morning and I have every intention of turning up there looking good and reasonable and refreshed and respectable and a credit to my bride. I go out with you tonight, Terry. The chances are I'll end up in a police station or a casualty ward or bound and gagged to a North Sea oil rig. <laughs> what are the lads going to think? They can think what they like. You'll never be able to look any of them straight in the eyes again. Terry, if I go out with you tonight, I'll never look anyone straight in the eyes again. Oh, Bob, please, please, think. I appeal to you. Think of all the great stags of the past. Think of all the lads whose memory you're letting down. Think of Bob Shearer, who went to the wrong church. And Tony Charles, who was sick in the vestry. And John Webb and the stomach pump. Was that in vain? Well, more fool them. Oh. I've told you all along how I was spending my stag night. Anyhow, drink on top of all those tranquilizers could be dangerous. Bob, Bob, sometimes you've got to live a little dangerously. You can't go through life worrying about how you're going to feel tomorrow. If you adopt that attitude, you never eat anything in case you had a sore stomach. You never drink anything in case you had a sore head. You never make love in case you had a sore back. <laughs> you, have, you have got to live for now, for today. Keep something spontaneous about life. A, a sense of adventure, excitement. I'm right now, aren't I? So what are we going to do? I'll put the kettle on, then we'll have a game of Ludo. <laughs> All packed, all done. No last-minute panic, no last-minute rush. You're going to make someone a wonderful road manager. Well, I feel happier in my mind now, knowing that it's all done, that I'm all packed. Should we, uh, should we get off to the church now, do you think? To avoid last-minute panic? Make sure we get a good queue? Now, let me see. Passport, tickets, travellers' checks. I'll need a little sterling at the airport, but that can come out of my Ludo winnings. You'll get your money. You'll get your money. Any time, Terry, any time before tomorrow tea time. Stupid game, Ludo, anyway. Just a look at the dice. What have you been doing while I was packing? Improving your Ludo? I've been sitting here, burning with anticipation, waiting for the epilogue and the shipping forecast. <laughs> Coco? I'll Coco you before this night's over. Oh, would you like to read this? What is it? It's our honeymoon holiday brochure. I'd rather play solo Ludo, thank you very much. <laughs> I've always wanted to go skiing. Norway's so handy from here. This time tomorrow night, we'll be in our chalet. I think I'll manage all right. Thelma and me have been doing the exercises. <laughs> what? <laughs> You've been doing premarital exercises? <laughs> For skiing. For the skiing, for poise and balance and suppleness and that. Yeah, it'll end in tears, this honeymoon. As soon as your poise and suppleness goes, once you lose your balance and topple off. You should see this hotel. The dining room boasts an international cuisine. There is a sauna bath, beauty parlour, and in the troll bar, our guests from many lands can relax with an apres ski cocktail. What does apres ski mean? After ski, after the skiing. After the skiing, Robert, you will be relaxing with your left leg encased in plaster from toe to thigh. <laughs> or for late night revelers, the Viking discotheque offers dancing to the latest groovy sounds till dawn. Not for the limbless ex skiers, it doesn't. <laughs> You're bound to break something over there, you know that, don't you? A leg or a collarbone. Or catch flu, or get frostbite. How can I get frostbite? Easily you're going to Norway, aren't you? That's where you get frostbite, Norway, places like that. What's he getting frostbite on your honeymoon? <laughs> Touch the extremities, you know. I'm going on a skiing holiday, not a polar expedition. Yeah, that brochure only talks about the centrally heated indoors. There is no clue as to the hazards without. There's no mention of the glaciers and the avalanches and the man-eating wolves. Where do you get all this from? Biggles in the Arctic? <laughs> it just seems to me that a honeymoon is a fairly important occasion, being how it's supposed to be the first time you're embarking on the great adventure of sleeping together. So why take unnecessary risks? You're going to spend most of your time giggling under the sheets anyway, so why not honeymoon in Edinburgh, where it's safe? You're not going to get eaten by a wolf in Princess Street. <laughs> I'm not going to get eaten by a wolf anywhere. Yeah, well, don't blame me if you are. And just remember, if you do break something over there, whatever it may be, while you're stuck in your wheelchair in the troll bar, supping your apres ski, 
some tall, six-foot, handsome, blonde ski instructor has got your Thelma on the slopes. Look, I don't have any doubts about Thelma's faithfulness. She's not going to be flashing ghost signals at every Tom, Dick and Sven. <coughs> every time my back is broken, I mean turned, what sort of girl do you think I'm marrying? It's got nothing to do with her, Bob. <laughs> nothing whatsoever. It's just, it's just something that happens to English girls when they're overseas. It happens all the time. All the time, to all sorts, even staunch Methodist girls. Even my cousin Olive, who was a sub-postmistress and is now married to a Motley's chippy. <laughs> Thelma's an assistant librarian. That's just the sort. You must have read last week's expose in the news of the world of English girls abroad. The wild and the willing, they call them. Once they bridge that strip of English Channel, they drop everything. Reserves, manners, morals and knickers. <laughs> It's only in unguarded moments on sun-soaked beaches do they let their passions rule their discretions. You did read last week's news of the world. Yes, I did. <laughs> but there was no mention of Norway. Robert, Robert, one snow-infested slope was much the same as any other. As is one blonde ski instructor or one dark-haired disc jockey. They're all the same breed. What would I do in a situation like that? I mean, I mean, what, what would I do if I broke a leg or something? Only one thing to do. What? Break Thelma's leg. <laughs> Sweet dreams. <laughs> I thought you'd have been fast asleep by now. I can't sleep. Those pills don't seem to be working. Perhaps I'll read a bit. We should never have played Ludo. All that tension and excitement, it's got your adrenaline going. <laughs> I might rewrite me speech. That joke about the parrot. Did you think that was funny? Did that make you laugh? It was the high point of the evening, Bob. I'm not sure now about that toast rack bit. I might take that out. I don't want to be too controversial. Oh. What's the matter? I thought for a moment, I felt a yawn coming on. <laughs> Would you like another cup of cocoa? No, 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 on second thoughts, I think you've had one too many already. You mustn't take any chances, will you? Oh, me? shut up, will you? Come on, get in a bed. Let's get some sleep. Oh. Do I have to sleep with you? Why can't I be in the spare? With me Auntie Beatty, there'd be talk. <laughs> well, give us some room, then. Move your feet! Move your feet! Well, you've got a warm bit there. Oh, well. <laughs> I'm not sure that Thelma would approve of this. She'll never believe the night we spent. I can't believe it either. <laughs> you know, I don't think it was a yawn. I think it was just wind. No, you tell me. <laughs> I might take another pill, a different pill. There were some pretty yellow ones with hundreds and thousands inside. <laughs> Where? In my mother's medicine cabinet. You can't go rummaging through there, picking out things at random. You can't go picking pills just because they're pretty. Now, look, 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 now, just close your eyes. Close your eyes and, and, and think of some fantasy. You'll soon be away. All right. <clears throat> you like it. Good night, Terry. What the hell's this? What? Oh, that's for tomorrow, isn't it? I got it for tomorrow, for emergencies. Be prepared. You scheming rotten... <laughs> I've had me fantasy. <laughs> what happened? We won. Won what? We won the cup and the league double, 4-1 at Wembley, against Arsenal. Oh, good, good. I was still wide awake, though. Well, give it a whirl, go into Europe. <laughs> We're losing. <laughs> We're losing away to AC Milan. Well, bring on a substitute yourself. That's what I always do. And you score a goal a minute from the end. Well, we'll still only draw. Well, away goals count double, don't they? <laughs> oh, for God's sake, think of something else, can't you? I mean, think of them girls on the top of the pops. <clears throat> I think I've got one. 
I've had this one before, but I never tire of it. It's in Barbados or Montego Bay. And I'm on this big white horse on a long white beach. There's a girl coming out of the sea. I can see her hair streaming in the breeze. And I can see the firm swell of her breasts <laughs> and her boyishly flat stomach. Go on, go on. <laughs> She's naked, except for a knife tied round her thigh. Her bronze thigh? Yes, her bronze thigh. <laughs> we meet, and we kiss, and we cling. Our wet bodies locked together in a warm embrace. I want you now, I whisper. Now, now. Wait, darling, she sighs. I can't, I say. My senses on fire at her touch. I want you now. Now with the sun and the sea and the sand. But darling, she says, we've got so much time. No, we haven't, I say. The tide's coming in. <laughs> yeah, it's one of them frustration ones. Yeah. I got a lot of them. <laughs> Who was the girl? No, she a thing. No, it was Thelma. Thelma? <laughs> Thelma, why her? Why wasn't it a film star or Miss Guiana or somebody? Well, I love Thelma. I'm getting married to her in a few hours' time. I know, I know, but you can still have your fantasies, can't you? I mean, just because you love someone doesn't give them automatic access to your fantasies. It's a waste of a fantasy otherwise. <laughs> I never wasted them on my wife. I mean, she was in bed with me when I went to sleep and she was there when I woke up. And in between, she never had a look in. <laughs> What sort of fantasies did you have? Oh, you know, the usual. Being a judge for Miss World. And being bribed. <laughs> or else I was wounded in the Israeli army. And I was being nursed by all them girl soldiers doing their national service before they became actresses or models. Or else I'm a ski instructor. Watch it. <laughs> Sometimes... I'm the new master at the girls' high school. That one seems to come back more and more. <laughs> yes, gym slips. I've been worried about that. I think the sexiest program on television is top of the form, not top of the pops. <laughs> if I have too many schoolgirl fantasies, I balance things up with a nice, healthy, sporty one. Last week I won the Oscar Gold Cup. <laughs> Who was on you, Lester Piggott? <laughs> He's heavier than you think. Me fetlocks are killing me. <laughs> ah, well, come on then, son. Let's get some sleep. Aye. Ah, good night, Terry. Good night. <clears throat> no. <laughs> no. No, Miss Morocco, I couldn't possibly. <laughs> oh. Terry? Terry? Hmm? Hmm? Oh, my God! Really? Oh, you great fool, standing there dressed like that, I thought you were an undertaker. <laughs> I thought I must have died. Oh, I'm sorry. D did I wake you? Well, of course you woke me! Oh, I was just teaching PT to a horde of Israeli sixth form schoolgirls and all. And they were just about to turn on me. Oh. I can't sleep. Is that what you woke me up to tell me? I haven't slept a wink. What are you doing all dressed up like that for? I'm having a dress rehearsal. At four o'clock in the morning? Well, I don't want to leave it to the last minute. 
Oh, for God's sake, man, get your hat off and come to bed. Let's get some sleep. I can't. I can't. I know I can't. Oh. What are you doing now? Oh, keep your voice down. You don't want to disturb me, mother. Charming. What are you doing? I'm rewriting my wedding speech. Why well, can't you do that downstairs? Oh, I don't want to disturb the cat. <laughs> you what? You what? Well, he's been out all night. Lucky bloody cat. <laughs> This won't work properly. Have you got a pencil? Do you believe I haven't got one on me? Isn't that good? <laughs> <coughs> oh, look, do you have to write with all the lights on? Can't you use a torch or your luminous rabbit or something? What have I done? What am I going to do, Terry? Well, don't ask me. But I am asking you. It's one of your functions, isn't it? That's why I asked you to spend the last night with me. The best man's functions, isn't it? Emergencies, telegrams and taxis. It's gone right through. <laughs> it's gone right through. Yeah, well, wiping that lot off doesn't come under my definition of an emergency. Terry, what am I going to do? I don't know, I don't know. But I'll tell you one thing. Whatever it is we do do, we're going to have a drink with it. <laughs> So we had our party after all, eh? I knew I'd get you out in the end. I knew that the lure of the bright lights would prove too much for you. There you are. It's all foamy. That's had soap powder in it. Oh, get it down, you. With all that stuff in your stomach, all them pills rattling about, a little bit of detergent's not going to make any difference. Perhaps it'll give me inner cleanliness. Mm. <laughs> well, here's to you. Cheers, and thanks. Thanks, Terry, for stopping with me and keeping me company and everything. Uh, my privilege. I'll put all this in my speech tomorrow. Oh. I should get a laugh at the wedding. What a night. Never mind. Won the town at last, eh? Tiny little place, this, though, but best laundrette in town. I'll tell you what, we'll have a couple here, then we'll go on to that new one in the high street. <laughs> and then the tea stall in the fish market. Oh, and after that, we can go to the outpatients at St George's. That's always good for a laugh at dawn. I do feel strange. I better not have too much of this. Drink on top of all those drugs. And I feel dizzy watching me trousers going round and round. Well, that's your own fault. If you'd taken my advice and had a stag party, none of this would have happened. You'd have gone out, had a few drinks, had a few laughs, passed out, been taken home, been sick, and you'd be fast asleep by now. I suppose it's tension. Inner tension. Or psychological deep down nerves, due to the fact that tomorrow's the most important day of my life. Today, mate. Today is the most important day of your life. Oh, those trousers dry out by the time you get into the church. I feel terrible. So do I. That's what nights in do for you. What did you do the night before you got married? I had a stag party, of course. It was a classic. What a night. There's still the talk of B.A.O.R. It was in the corporal's mess. And there was my lot, a few of the artillery lads, and some jocks from the Gordons. I had 14 pints of lager, three large scotch, half a bottle of schnapps, and beat up a bombardier. <laughs> the drink made you mellow, did it? <laughs> Taffy Lewis broke a fire hydrant, and Shillingford broke his collarbone, falling off the roof. What was he doing on the roof? Looking for his shoes. <laughs> Silly question. The CSM kicked a kraut, and that little scouse from E-Block was sick all over the regimental mascot. What a charming evening. I'm surprised I didn't read about it in Jennifer's diary. And all the lads grabbed me, pulled me trousers down and boot polished me. <laughs> Six hours before the service and all. God, did you ever get it off? By the time I got demobbed, it had lost most of its shine. <laughs> and that's your idea of a great pre-marital evening, is it? Well, at least I didn't have any trouble getting to sleep, no inattention. They just poured me into me bunk, and the next thing I knew was when they pronounced us man and wife. Bob? Bob? Hey, come on, Bob. Wakey, wakey. Come on. 
No good lying there like that. I'm not going to give you the kiss of life. <laughs> come on, son, come on. You're getting married tomorrow. Bom, bom, ba, bom. Bom, bom, ba, bom. Bom, bom. <laughs> evening, officer. Somebody's been having a good evening by the look of things. Somebody's been painting the town a little bit too red. Well, we haven't. We haven't been across the doors. <laughs> Oh, all right, pull the other one. Eureka spirits. All we've had tonight is Kogo the epilogue and a few fantasies. <laughs> Coco. <clears throat> and you lads got arms to go to? Yes, of course we have. We're, we're just waiting for his trousers. Come on, lad, wake up. Come on, pull yourself together. Oh, he's as drunk as... No, a... he's not, he's not, he's, he's... He's not had a drop. He's out cold. Well, that's not the alcohol, man. That's not the drink, that's the drugs. <laughs> oh, what a fantastic night's sleep. Oh, oh, those Israeli girls. Mine, the sun gets everywhere. Has my man been in with the tea yet? Not yet. <laughs> Where's my lampshade gone? <laughs> Where's my bedroom gone? <laughs> Tell you, where are we? Where are we? Leave off your phone. We're... Don't panic. Get a grip of yourself. There is nothing to worry about. We're in a cell. <laughs> what do you mean we're in a cell? What cell? What cell? Why? We are were arrested or being held under the Emergency Powers Act pending further investigations. <laughs> For God's oh, sake, you've settle, got to get us out of here, man. Settle down, you're not in death row. But, but, but what, what are we doing here? I mean, why are we in a cell? But what, what happened? Do you remember the police box and the strange doctor? Be serious, will you? Do you remember the laundrette? Oh, God, I... Right, well, you crashed out. Your system collapsed under the mixture of scotch tranquilizers and detergents. And the law came along and brought us in. On what charge? Well, I don't know. Vagrancy, disorderly conduct, drunken charge of a spin dryer. <laughs> what time is it? It's what? all right, it's all right. I've told them you're getting married. They might give you a lift to the church. An escort, a motorcade of blue flashing lights and sirens. Ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh. Oh, God, no, not in front of Thelma's mother. She nearly had a heart attack when a policeman asked me for my road tax. <laughs> Alive, is he? <laughs> very sorry, sir. We're very sorry for any inconvenience we might have caused you, sir. What's, uh, what's going to happen? There'll be no charges, lad. Come on, get yourselves off home. Thank you. Thank you very you, much, you, sir. You, Thank you, you, sir. You, you'll never learn. Stag parties. Why didn't you have it a few days earlier? Then have a quiet night in before the wedding. <laughs> It, it's an important day, you know. It's the most important of your life. You, you, you don't want to turn up looking and feeling terrible. Like I did. I'll remember next time, sir. How many wives are you planning on? Come on, let's get you home and get you dressed. Oh, oh here, by the way. Um, I think these are yours. Well, that should get a laugh at the wedding. <laughs>